All right. So how do I sound? This is pretty much... This is the worst one, for sure. Really? Uh, we need to talk about Bose speakers. We have a lot of them, and you guys need an update. It's 2023 and Bose is still making the same old speakers. Flex, Revolve 2, Revolve 2 Plus, Bose Smart Portable Speaker. You know what these remind me of? These two guys with the little handles? McDonald's Happy Meal Pail. The little handle. But to get that handle, you have to pay significantly more for these two than you do for these guys. So my goal today is to help demystify some of what's going on here. So here's some specs for you. Best battery life out of all of these is gonna to go to the Bose SoundLink Revolve 2 Plus, it's 17 hours. Bluetooth is gonna be most up to date in the, this guy and the Bose Flex at 4.2, which is still pretty, pretty ancient. You can do stereo pairing on these guys, but not on him. He is not allowed to do stereo pairing for some reason. In terms of water resistance, the Bose Flex is still the best at IP67. You're looking at IP55 for these guys, and then IPX4 for the smart one here. It's just, uh, don't, don't get near the water with this one. And all of these have the standard SBC codec, except for this one, which can also do the AAC codec for a slightly higher definition type audio. This is the only one that can actually do Wi-Fi out of the bunch. The rest are only gonna be purely Bluetooth, so they're not necessarily gonna to talk to your smart devices unless you go through a backdoor channel to get them linked up. Price-wise, there's a huge difference in these things. The Bose Flex is currently going for around 130 bucks. You're looking at $219 right now, $329, and a whopping $400 for this guy. $400 for this. That's so much money. One of the things about Bose I really don't like is that I feel like a lot of their speakers are very overpriced for what they are. The Bose Flex is probably the only one that I feel like is priced perfectly and is a good bang for your buck. Every speaker here except for the Flex can do 360 audio, but that's not the same as the Sony 3D 360 reality audio or the Apple spatial audio. It has nothing to do with it. All it means is just it shoots in 360 degrees around the speaker, essentially. We need to talk about the app. So the Revolve series and the Flex actually use an older Bose app called Bose Connect versus the smart portable speaker uses something called Bose Music. It's incredibly confusing to differentiate those. I was so confused on my phone. In general, Bose apps suck. They're just, they're not good. Like. They're very confusing, they're very temperamental. Everything has to be just right. For example, when I tried to start stereo pairing this series over here, uh, I found out that it wouldn't work. It kept like timing out until I actually changed the custom names of these within the app. So like right now this is named Possum, this is named Pepper, and this is named something like Dixie, Dupe Dixie or something. And then I, I called this one Thud Bucket, just because I thought it was funny. So it wasn't until I changed the name that these guys were actually able to start doing stereo with each other. What it tells me is that their app is not very robust. It's not very durable for the user experience. A brand that I would say does that well, Apple um, or Sony, they just kind of work. Whereas the Bose, I, I would say like, if you're gonna get Bose, just be prepared to be a little frustrated. If I was to, to let my dad try and figure out how to use the Bose smart portable speaker, I'm afraid he would have like a stroke or something from using it. It's, I needed like two hours to get this thing set up. Restart the phone, re, 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 redo the cache and the data, and then restart the speaker. And then everything just had to align just right until it finally worked. And then when I tried to update the speaker, it just updated forever until I finally closed the app. And turns out it was updated. It's just the app didn't time out correctly, so it never notified me that it was updated. So I'm a little little angry at it for, for doing that. And then once I did have everything finally set up, it kept telling me it couldn't talk to it. It was really surprising how horrible the app experience is. So, so, so Bose, please just stop sucking at the app. Invest more into it, please. Now all of these have microphones for doing phone calls, except for the smart portable one, which only does phone calls over your smart app, like in my case, the Echo Amazon setup. But I think you're gonna be surprised which one actually sounded the best out of all of them. This is speaker number one. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Okay. This one is worse than the last one. Oh, really? Your voice sounds a little bit more distorted than it did on the first one. Can you hear me okay on this one? 
getting through? I can hear you okay. I think this is slightly better than the last one. So how do I sound? This is pretty much- This is the worst one for sure. Speak a little bit longer. Yeah, so Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Sally sells- Yeah, no, it's incredibly um, just clipped, like- Oh my God. It does, it's just not clear. I think that the first one was the best, okay. followed by the third one. Um, yeah, the worst one was the last one, the fourth one. That was but the worst all, one? Yeah, that was the worst one. But all of these are worse than the, your phone quality. So like okay. number one number one got a seven out of 10. So yeah, that was kind of surprising, right? Like you gotcha. Let's go ahead and just listen to how these guys sound. And we're also gonna test it amongst amongst these guys, the Sony Marshall Middleton and this little sound core speaker. If you put on your uh, earphones, this will be a little bit more accurate. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I, I, I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna. Time to stop listening to speakers. Bose Flex versus the Soundlink Revolve 2. Uh, no question, the Bose Flex is, I think, a way better value. It just, it's a lot cheaper and it sounds actually better to me. Yeah, this is a $330 speaker. Like, you could just get two Bose Flexes for that price and use them in stereo mode and it will probably sound way better. The only thing I will say that's really good about it is the, the build quality is really nice. Like. It feels like a solid, seamless uh, shell. However they extruded this thing, they did a good job with the manufacturing, but it doesn't sound the best. And I think sound is still like one of the most important things to me. I think that the Marshall Middleton here is a much better buy than the Bose Soundlink Revolve 2 Plus. I think the Marshall Middleton offers you quite a bit more in terms of just battery life features. It's more up to date. Um, the only thing it can't do, the Marshall Middleton can't do, I don't think it can do stereo mode in any capacity. So that's the only benefit that the Revolve 2 Plus would have. The smart portable speaker. I really think this is a terrible value. It's basically the Revolve 2 Plus, but with Wi-Fi integration. And for that, you have to pay significantly more. Um, it doesn't actually sound any better. I actually think this sounds a little bit more dull than the Revolve 2 Plus. Like I actually don't think it sounds quite as good. The only thing it has going for it is that it has the AAC codec versus the SBC so you can get better fidelity audio, but that doesn't really matter if it just doesn't sound quite as good. Now you can equalize this a little bit, but I just, I don't know if it's gonna fix it. If you are getting the smart portable speaker as like a portable Amazon or Chromecast type device where you can just bring it around the house and talk to it and it can control your lights and stuff, that, this is good for that. Once it's set up for that, it's actually pretty awesome. But it just, it's really not a great speaker in and of itself. Just the fact that it has bows on it doesn't mean it's actually that good. Of all the speakers here, the Anchor is a really good value. This is a really cheap speaker. I don't remember the exact price, but I know it's not much. And it sounds just about as good as the best speakers in the lineup. 
This is a pretty good value. The Sony XG300, it's really cheap. It's on sale right now, and you can use the LDAC codec on it, which is pretty nice. Anyways, this is not a video about Sony. I'd say if I had to choose between these speakers, I'd probably skip this lineup right here of uh, bucket speakers, and I'd just go straight for the flex and do this in stereo mode. I, I think that's really the best way. So there's my updated opinion on these speakers in 2023. Hopefully that helps you as you see these go on sale or whatever. If you made it to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you a little, little nugget about my life that you didn't know. When I was in middle school, we, we had the same bus driver come to the bus route every day. And he would come by and I would always say, hey, Samson, how's it going? I'd like be really excited when I did it every morning. I'd rush into the bus and be like, hey, Samson. And one morning there was a substitute bus driver and I jumped onto the bus not knowing it was a substitute driver and I, I was starting to say the hey Samson thing. I was like, hey, and I stopped once I realized it wasn't Samson and I just said, good day, sir, very loudly. That's the first thing that came out of my mind was to say good day, sir, to somehow make it more formal and like avoid what I was just about to say. And I remember everybody just looking at me on the bus as I walked to the back seat, I had to like, walk by everybody and I just felt really weird. So anyways, that was a little story about me. I hope you enjoyed that. So see you later. Bye.